Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to uh, university. Uh, before you, before I proceed any further, please just make sure that you've actually also checked in. My name's Amanda Abel, and I'm really excited to be standing here today. And you know why? Because of all of you, because you've all made it here to the University of Adelaide, and more importantly, you're in sciences. But before we start the proceedings today, what I'd like to do first of all is to acknowledge and pay our respects to the Kaurna people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we host this event on today. Because we are also live streaming the event today, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land of those people who are watching this live stream from elsewhere and also acknowledge any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who might be participating in today's event as well. So I'm your MC for today and I'm Deputy Dean for Learning and Teaching in the Faculty of Sciences and my role is basically to make sure that you guys have the best student experience possible during the time that you find yourself here at the university. But we're going to uh, have a welcome to you all today from our interim executive dean, uh, Professor Laura Parry. So I would like to invite uh, Laura to come and uh, welcome you all. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Amanda. So yes, I'd like to warmly welcome you all to the Faculty of Sciences. It's lovely to be able to say that face to face to some of you in the lecture theatre, but a very warm welcome to anyone who's live streaming as well. Uh, and hopefully you'll get here on campus soon. Now it's a real privilege to be able to talk to you today. Um, and as I say, it's great to see so many of you on campus. Let's hope it stays that way. And I think it's really important to acknowledge you and congratulate you first on your significant achievements in actually finishing year 12 and getting here. It was a really challenging year last year, I'm sure, for all of you in the room. So pat yourself on the back. You've done the hard work and you have so much to look forward to now you're here. I think, like Amanda, it's an incredible privilege to be looking out at what I see, this sea of young faces. You're the next generation future leaders in science, and that's really exciting for me. And I'm confident that among you today are people who are going to find solutions to major global problems. We all know about the situation with the pandemic, problems to do with animal and human diseases. We've got big challenges with the environment and climate change. We're worrying about our food security. Are we going to have clean air and water? And amongst you are people who are going to come up with solutions to these problems. We also have people among you who are going to um, develop new technologies, make new materials, even find new materials in our planet. But most important, I hope all of you are here to um, satisfy your own curiosity start asking fundamental questions about the world we live in. And I'm extremely proud to think that my sort of, what le is left of my sort of future, I'll say, my life, um, and the future of the planet and our society is in, actually in your hands. And that's extremely exciting. Now, as Amanda said, we're here to help you. Our role is to give you every opportunity su to succeed. It's a big decision to come to university and we want you to really enjoy your time here in the Faculty of Sciences and help you realise your ambitions. Today is the, is the start of a long journey of discovery. What is it you want to do with life? What job will you get? And what incredible experiences will you have that lead to lifelong friends? You should actually talk to some of our staff and students about their own journeys of discovery. And I remember my first day when I went to university in the UK at Bristol, I actually left home and I traveled two hours. It seemed like an enormous you know, distance to go to university. And I was quite terrified. But within a matter of weeks, I settled into a routine, 
met fantastic new people who have remained friends for life and I can honestly say I had the best time of my life. I hope that you also come away after your time here and say you had the best time of your life here. So I really want to encourage you to chat to our academics and, the, um, st and current students. I think we have some really excellent student mentors. We're not scary. We want you to succeed. Um, and we're here to support you, not just today, this week, this semester, but the, for all of your time at the university and our faculty. Please ask questions. Any question is a good question and we have lots of different people who can answer those questions. Please come and visit us in this student, um, sorry, in the Sciences Service um, Hub in the Faculty of Sciences. Our staff are fantastic. They are there to help you. And please go and see them if you've got any problems enrolling with your timetable, if you've just got any questions and, and you want help. So welcome again to the Faculty of Sciences. Enjoy O Week. And I wish you all the very best in semester one and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. OK. Let's get down to the business of finding out all of the bits and pieces we need to know in terms of sciences at the University of Adelaide. First of all, I want to actually just remind you of one of the things you should be very proud of, that you have chosen to come to an institution which is in the top 150 in the world for science. And we're quite proud of that, and a lot of that is to do with the research capability that we have. And what that means for you guys is that the people who are teaching you are also the best researchers in the world, which means that our goal is to make sure that you're up to date with everything, whatever your discipline might be that you have enrolled in. And of course, the other thing is that STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths, but in our case, we're really focused on the science, um, is above world standard and it's also going to give you a job. STEM is one of those things that the federal government sees as really quite important. So for us, that means we have to make sure that uh, we're going to help you get that particular job. And often it's a higher paid job and um, more employers want those particular skills that you as students are going to have uh, when you've finished your degrees. What are the types of skills that I'm talking about that we want to give you during your time here? Well, I'm talking about what we call employability skills, that you can learn actively, that you can think critically. And you know what? As a scientist, that's the main thing that I do. I'm curious about things. I need to actually think about how can I solve this particular problem? And as Laura said, she's hoping that you guys are the future's problem solvers, okay? You're the innovators that are out there. And the other thing that's really important is while we're scientists and, you know, we're curious, we do like to solve lots of problems, do experiments, do all sorts of things like that, actually, if we can't tell anyone about it, what's the point of doing it? We actually have to be able to convey our message to society and tell them why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing that as well. So those interpersonal skills are also really important. So the types of things that you'll do over the next few years while you're with us is we'll be making sure that we take theory to practice. You will have gathered that we value the face-to-face -face interaction quite a lot in this faculty. And that's because one of the graduate learning outcomes for you guys is that you know how to do things. Whether it's use a pipette, whether it's go and do something out in the field, it's usually got measurement in it. It's got all sorts of different elements as scientists. So for us, that practical element is really important. And so science uh, is one of those places to come if you are wanting that face-to-face -face practical experience. Um, we also like to give you the opportunity, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, around internships and opportunities to actually engage with industry. And also, um, we have lots of professional development opportunities that will happen throughout your degree. So you go, great, why are you telling me all this? Well, 
I'm telling you all this because I think you've landed in the right place and what we want to do is to support you to get to wherever it is that you want to head after university. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't matter if you don't actually know what that is and that's fine. Science is one of those careers where you can go not on a direct pathway but actually go many different pathways. And we'll actually hear from some students today who are going to tell us about uh, their story and how they ended up where they are. But the main goal of today is to basically help you navigate through what is going to be um, a fairly busy time in life, but as Laura said, one of the best times of your life because this is where you form some of the friendships that you will hold on to throughout your careers and networks as well. So I'm going to take you through a whole bunch of things that you need to know um, and all of the stuff that we're actually going to be talking through today is also on my uni because I know you're going to get overload, sensory overload, lots of stuff to learn this week. So if you don't remember something, that's okay. Just make sure that you come visit the My Uni website. So you would have been sent an invitation when you enrolled to join up to the My Uni orientation website for sciences. Make sure that you do join up because all of the information you'll need is there. It also has all of the information about certain events, uh, information about peer mentors and all of the other things that we're going to have. So make sure that um, you join up to that. This little, oh, sorry. <laughs> this, the little image on the, and let's see if I can remember my left and right, <laughs> the little image on the left hand side there is what it would look like in your dashboard on my uni. So if you've, signed, if you've agreed to the invitation, and I'll use this as a, a a prompt to make sure that you have, you should have that sitting in your dashboard on my uni. Make sure you go and check it out because you can see that you know there's a whole bunch of information there and in fact uh, today's recording will go there as well. The other group of people and Laura mentioned this group of people that are really important for you guys in terms of seeking support if you've ever got a question and we'll talk about the types of questions uh, fairly soon are the Sciences Service Hub team. They're located in the Darling Building which is kind of opposite the library uh, near where the stairs are and they're open from Monday to Friday 10 to 4. You can email them, you can uh, drop in and see them as well. It's they're really, really friendly people. You can tell. See, look, they're all smiling, so they all want to be able to help you. They're great people to ask lots of questions of. What I would like to do now, though, is uh, invite our senior peer mentors who are all standing up over here <laughs> uh, to uh, come across. So we've got Ella, Brian, Megan, Mitchell and Sarja. And they're going to tell you a little bit about what role they play as peer mentors. Did you want? Oh, no, it's okay. I think that's okay. That's fine. Oh, did you? Hi, um, my name's Megan. I'm one of your senior peer mentors. I'm studying a Bachelor of Bi Biomedical Science, uh, majoring in Biochemistry and Microbiology. Um, I'm about to start my second year. Um, I just want to say uni is one of my favourite places in the whole world. Like, I absolutely <laughs> love it here. Um, so I hope you guys can also have an equally good experience and enjoy it as much as I do, because it's a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Brian. Um, I'm doing a Bachelor of Science Advance. This is about to be my third year. So I'm also majoring in biochemistry and microbiology. Um, and I love it. This is the best place in the world. And yes, I'm a little bit older, so I've come back for the first time. I hope you, everybody here has as much fun as I'm having. And we're here to support you. And there'll be events throughout the semester in that journey. Hi everyone, I'm Sadia and I'm also doing a Bachelor in Biomedical Science and I'm just starting my second year. Um, so I, 
hope you have an amazing time here. And I also want to mention that I'm an international peer mentor, so you all you'll see me around campus quite a bit. So feel free to say hi. And yeah, hope you have a great time. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Mitch, and I'm a PhD student in my final year at the moment. So as you can see, our senior peer mentor team, we've got a we do like our biological sciences, but we do have a whole range of uh, different levels of experience and different backgrounds and um, different, just gr huge amounts of information that we can impart on you in your first year. Now, as senior peer mentors, we're going to be putting together a few events, um, the first of which is going to be coming up next Friday. So keep an eye out on my uni in particular. We're going to give you a bit more information about that, but it's just going to be sort of a fun networking, get to know it, get to know everybody. Now, in addition to us, we're also going to have uh, the rest of the peer mentor team, and these are all going to be other science students, generally second and third year. So they've all been through what you're about to go through. They all know what it's like, and they've all got a lot of advice and assistance to give you. So um, just want to finish saying good luck with the, to everybody in their first year, and I hope that you guys really enjoy it. Thank you, Mitchell, uh, and everyone else. So these guys are your senior peer mentors. As first years, you'll have access, I guess, to the senior peer mentors plus their peer mentor team, not only for, hey, can I ask a question, but also for the events, as Mitchell said. So up on the screen there, we've actually got, uh, you know, next week will be meet and greet. So always sort of keep that Friday 12 to 1 free, okay, because that's when we'll usually have our events we will also have the science clubs as part of one of those in week three. Week two, I think, is going to be about preparing for practicals. We've also got some events planned um, which uh, later in the semester and also drop-in mentoring as well so that you can drop in and ask these guys and their teams a question as well. All of the details, you know that MyUni website I pointed you towards? That's where you'll find all of those details as well. So thank you very much, guys. So these are your peer mentors. <laughs> Thanks, guys. OK, so we've got Sciences Service Hub, who are staff, and then we've got our peer mentors who uh, you can sort of ask questions about. The next thing I want to actually touch on is some of that other stuff that happens at university. You know. Obviously, you're here to study and we want you to study and we want you to do really well at your study. But sometimes there are other parts of university life which actually value add to that particular proposition, okay? And as Laura said, she's, you know, had uh, lots of friends. I know myself, the people that I went to university with and that was too long ago to worry about and it was in another state completely, we actually are still collaborators in our research. So it actually pays to make sure that you get to know who's around you. Don't be afraid to dive right in to new things. It's the only way you can actually find out what other stuff is out there. And so I'm always going to encourage you to do that. So when we're thinking about all of these other um, co-curricular or extracurricular activities, it includes a whole range of different things, things that value add. So I'm going to sort of talk through some of those uh, now. The first of those is the Adelaide Graduate Award. So this is uh, something which um, basically is an employability development program. You get it actually onto your transcript uh, at the end of your degree. And it's a structured program. It basically gives you time with employers. You could also use time, for example, if you were um, a president of a club or something like that. You can actually utilise that towards the Adelaide Graduate Award. And, you know, employers look at it and go, oh, they did a little bit extra. They learnt a little bit more about being um, a good employee, quite, possibility, quite possibly. Um, and so it does help you to deliver your um, skills in particular. So um, any student can register. It doesn't matter whether you're uh, on North Terrace, Waite or Roseworthy campus, you can actually um, participate in this. So um, here's a little video from the team. Oh, sorry, wrong play button. I'll hit this play button. No. 
I will hit that. <laughs> Sorry. Doing the Adelaide Graduate Award gives you an edge and differentiates you from all of the other graduates, which is really important when it comes to employability. The Adelaide Graduate Award helped me to develop not only like passion, dedication, but also the character. I think it is for everyone, regardless of what stage in university. It helps someone who just started uni to plan out their volunteering activities or for a student who is finishing to articulate their experience. It's making students engage with their extracurricular activities and making students realise the importance of extracurricular activities as well. It's not just university related volunteering that you can do. Adelaide Graduate Award actually gives you a chance to think outside the box. You could be an executive of a sports club. You could do tutoring, mentoring, uh, work for the university. There's so many things that you could do. The Adelaide Graduate Award is a formal recognition by the university of the work experience and the volunteering that I've done throughout my university life. To get a stamp of approval from the university of my work is actually really great because I don't think a lot of other universities offer this and that makes me stand out from the crowd. So the Adelaide Graduate Award is obviously aimed at giving you some opportunities to interact more with employers and industry, but the recommendation is to register early in your degree. So start it as early as possible. Um, and there's obviously um, a website there for you. All of this information is on the MyUni website as well. The next thing I want to talk about is study overseas and internships. And you might go study overseas, what? We're stuck in Australia at the moment. But generally speaking, most of our students don't actually go overseas until uh, second year, second semester. So let's go, fingers crossed, we've all started the vaccination program, that there will be an opportunity for you. And obviously internships, there are obviously plenty of opportunities for internships. I think the key thing to note there is there are obviously lots of different opportunities and in fact it doesn't just include studying overseas for a semester, it might also include short programs, so things like study tours and up on the screen there I've got a bunch of different uh, study tours that our students do at different times of their degree and depending upon their degree that are of interest but it also sometimes includes internships as well. So um, I think it's actually something that I know that all of our students have always valued when they've done it because not only does it give you an opportunity to learn something in a different country, it also gives you life experience. So there's you know, cultural experience as well. So it's always been really good for our students. What about internships? Well, we do have the opportunity for internships. So um, I've got two 
what we call course codes up there, Science 2700 and Science 3700. So if you're a second year, you might do the second year course. If you're a third year, you can do the third year course. There are opportunities. And in this course, what happens is you get married up with an employer and you spend 150 hours with work experience with them and it's worth three units in your degree. So it's something worth considering because you get those employability skills. Um, and we've got a great course coordinator who helps to guide you through reflecting upon what you've learnt and thinking about how you might use those in terms of advancing your career into the future. So uh, internships are something else that uh, you can also engage in. So study overseas, internships and Adelaide Graduate Award are all things that the university runs to help provide a little bit of extra for you guys. But then also there are the things that are student run. And so the first of these, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Karazon and Amrash from uh, the Adelaide University Sciences Association or as we call them, OSCAR. Hello. Yep. Oh, cool. Uh, just a quick mic check. Is there anybody named Michael around here? Well, cool. All right. That concludes my mic check. So, uh, hi guys. Uh, so I'm Amrish, and this is Corazon, and we're from Oscar, and we're here to talk to you about clubs. So. Clubs are a great way to meet new people. From acting to anime, we have it here. Now, clubs. They're a great way to meet people with common interests or people who are passionate about the same things. Most clubs run social activities that you can hang out with new people and these can be in person or online. They're also a great way for networking. Some clubs may run networking activities where you can meet industry professionals, you can further your career or just learn more about a career that you're interested in. Now, clubs can center around hobbies such as board games, or they can be creating spaces with like-minded individuals, such as the Pride Club or Women in STEM. Now, no matter what club you choose, all of them are committed to creating a safe, welcoming, and inviting environment for you to settle into. Clubs are a great way to get used to uni life. Then they can create a community that can really help when you're feeling somewhat foreign in a new place. All right, thank you. So. There's also sports clubs in the uni, and so each of these clubs, they'll have different difficulty grading in a sense. So if, whether you're a competitive person that wants to compete, or you just want to play a sport for fun, or you're a beginner that wants to try a new sport, clubs have you sorted. They have different gradings and levels, so anybody can join. So might as well try new things. So as we said, we are Oscar. So we are actually the oldest non-sporting club uh, in uh, the university, 130 years old now. So we host a lot of events. So we have barbecues, cyball, which is like basically a ball event for all our science students, pop crawls, hopefully, and uh, quiz nights and industry nights. So it's a lot of socialization. You can meet people from the faculty and a lot of um, fellow students. But you can also have networking events. So we also have networking events where you can meet people from the industry, researchers, and hopefully further your career. Cool. So. Oscar has also created a first year survival guide that is available to any first year student here today. So what that means is it has like do's and don'ts of uni life, a who's who when it comes to your professors, um, how to study online, and much more. So if you want to download that, all you need to do is take a photo of the IQ code up here, or you can go to my uni, go to the semester one orientation, and then the orientation week folder, it will be there. All right, cool. So just to wrap it up, so this is going to be our first event. Uh, it's going to be our meet and greet. So anybody that wants to join, you can come along, meet new people. And as well, we also have our first year committee rep. So we're actually hiring Oscar, our committee. We need a first year rep. So as Amanda said, this is a great opportunity to get started if you want to help us plan events and just be a part of the community and have a nice little line in your resume. Why not? So see you there. Cool. Great. Thanks, guys. 
I encourage you, there are so many clubs. I think I even saw, I didn't know there was a salsa dancing club. That looks really interesting. Um, but, you know, I believe there's also a Quidditch club and there's, uh, there's some really weird and wonderful clubs out there. Best way to meet people ever. Make sure that you dive right in. All right. I'm going to introduce next uh, Tobias, who's going to tell us about the Adelaide University Union. Thank you, Tobias. Howdy, everyone. So, yeah, my name's Tobias. Um, this is my fifth year at this university in the Faculty of Sciences. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. Uh, I'm a student doctor of veterinary medicine out at the Roseworthy campus. Uh, so I think there's a different talk for the satellite campuses later on, but if any of you are from Roseworthy, um, special welcome. Uh, but at the moment, I'm here in my role as a student employee of the Adelaide University Union. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the union is and does. So, in short, the union is here to make things more fun, more interesting, and as smooth for you as possible. Uh, it's in the name, it's a union of students. Um, there's a lot of different wings of the union, but at the top of all of it is a board of elected students who make all of the governance decisions. So, basically, for students by students. Uh, there's a lot of different subsidies of the union, um, and I'm going to go through some of them for you today, just to give you a bit of an idea what's available. Um, so first up is the um, sort of student media wing of things. So uh, on D, um, and it's not pronounced on dit, uh, it's on D. <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah, that's a fun one. But yeah, the, so On D is a um, student magazine. So again, for students, by students, elected student editors run the magazine. Um, and basically, this is content, um, student opinions, student news, uh, and student artwork goes into that magazine. And they're always looking for submissions. So if anyone's got anything that they would like to get in there, definitely look them up, um, because all of the content comes from students at this university. There's also student radio, um, which is the SR up there. So it's pretty much as the name suggests, although I believe it's a podcast now um, and they produce audio visual content um, for, bas they basically just run the entertainment side of things. And I think they also do some live music. Um, and underneath the union is also student representation. So the SRC, the Student Representative Council, lots of people would have had SRCs at their school. Um, we have one here as well. It's pretty much the same deal. It's an elected council of students who are there to represent you to the university and also to various levels of government. Um, and I do have a slide about clubs, but that's already been captured pretty well by the guys from Orska. Um, I will give a plug for Orska. Uh, they said they're looking for a first year rep. I was the first year rep in 2017. It was a fantastic experience. I really, really recommend that you guys go for it. Um, and weird and wonderful clubs. Last year, I was the president of the Roseworthy Pig Club. So we had pigs on campus, took selfies with them. One of our biggest events is our selfie contest. Uh, fantastic. There's weird and wonderful clubs for everyone. Please check them out. Um, moving on, so the union themselves uh, is largely a social body. So um, we run a lot of events. I'm not quite sure exactly what this calendar looks like for this year, but in the past we've had all sorts of things, including Unibar Bingo, uh, which was one of my favourites, and that is where I met a lot of my friends who um, I still study, hang out, collaborate with today, four years later. Um, so yeah, really recommend getting around some of the union events. They're a really good way to get to know your fellow students and to have a good time. Uh, we also offer, um, sorry, I really should have looked at these slides a bit better before I got up here today. <laughs> um, but yeah, same deal. It's just a bunch of events that we offer. Um, so you can join the union for $30 for one year or $55 for three. So for free, for three, for three. Um, anyway, there's, so the union um, offers a lot of student representation regardless of whether you join or not, and most events are available for members or non-members, but membership does give you some extra perks, so membership will get you into those events for free, um, whereas there may sometimes be a cover charge for non-members, um, and membership will also get you a whole heap of discounts um, on university merch, uh, course essentials, etc. Um, so I personally really think it's worthwhile joining the union and that's as a student, not as an employee of the union. Uh, I joined when I came along in first year and I definitely got my money's worth. Um, so definitely a plug for that. 
Uh, yeah, oh, all the things I mentioned before, you get a bunch of discounts um, on uni merchandise, food and drinks and businesses around Adelaide. Uh, so moving on to some of the other wings of the union, Student Care um, is an independent organisation, so you do not have to be a member of the union to get help from Student Care. So Student Care employs trained social workers, um, so then they offer counselling services and support services, and they advocate for student welfare within the university. Um, there's a student employment service, so if you're looking to either work while you're a student, they provide job opportunities and advertise job opportunities, or if you're looking to build a resume, CV, interview advice, cover letter, etc., to help yourself either for a job you're applying for now or for once you've finished, these are the guys to go to. Um, and volunteering, so you would have seen possibly some student volunteers wearing white shirts at O-Week today. So you can go to volunteering if you're, one, interested in volunteering at some union events here on campus. It's a really good way to get more closely involved with the community and get to know everyone. Um, or two, if you want to volunteer for not-for-profit organisations off campus, this is also the place to go. Um, O-Week. Well, you guys are here. Congratulations, you made it to O-Week 2021. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the social events on uh, in O-Week, um, the stalls that you've seen set up, clubs land, etc., cetera, um, is all under the union. So uh, you can hop onto the website, auu.org.au, to check out all of the services and where to find them. That's really the easiest way, especially now that a lot of things are online. So please hop on and check it out. And you can come and speak to union employees around O-Week today on the Barsmith Lawns uh, or over at Clubsland. Um, union House is over there somewhere. Uh, that's where the office is. <laughs> You'll be able to find it if you're looking for it. Um, and yeah, as I said, find us on our socials. I'm doing an Instagram takeover today, so I'll be posting all of the stories. So definitely hop on and grab a follow. Hopefully it'll be interesting, doing my best. Uh, that's, it. that's it, is that it? Is this the next one? Sweet, cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. Join clubs. Thanks, Tobias. Okay, so We've just seen all of the different kind of extra co-curricular activities. Let's go back to, okay, study, which is what we're all here for. Um, what are some of the support services that are available? Well, you can see that there's a list there. We've got academic drop-in centre. We've got maths learning and writing centre. We've got studiosity and pass. So the academic drop-in centre is basically located in Hub Central in... Uh, uh, level three, and basically they provide support for first year chemistry, biology, and physics, and any of the times that are that they're open. If you go to the first year students page on the Faculty of Sciences website, you'll get that information about those academic drop-in centres. Also, you'll find if you're doing any of those first big first year courses, that usually it also um, has some information about the drop-in centres in their My Uni pages as well. So make sure you check them out and don't be afraid to go and ask the academic if you would like for help in those particular courses, okay? Really important to always ask for help. The Maths Learning Centre and the Writing Centre are also located in Hub Central in Level 3 and they basically provide one-on-one -on -one support for uh, maths, including statistics if anybody's uh, enrolled in stats and also in writing. So they won't necessarily write things for you, but what they will do is actually give you some hints, some tips and tricks on how to do some things um, and, and help uh, get you on, on the right pathway if you're struggling with that. It is actually free for all students and it's open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Mondays uh, to Fridays during teaching weeks. So the Math Learning Centre and Writing Centre um, it can be really useful. Studiosity um, is actually a free online study support which is linked into our first year courses and basically you can do an instant live text chat uh, with a qualified subject expert. The sort of you can ask questions or you can submit um, sort of questions um, and um, it will kind of give you back the answer. So someone's online somewhere else usually somewhere else in the world, and they can help you with that. So a lot of our students use Studiosity, particularly for 
um, biology and chemistry. So um, you can also access, um, so through MyUni, you'll see the link will sit in the modules area of your MyUni uh, course. The last thing there is PASS, which is peer assisted support sessions. And so this is where um, there are a bunch of peer mentors which help basically provide support sessions. You will see that PASS is actually against all of our first year, the majority of our first year courses. And so um, there are actually people who've done the course before you, they might be second year or third years, and they can provide hints and tips on how to um, get through particular bits and pieces. So um, there also you'll find the information about them on my uni for your individual courses as well. Plus they'll also reach out to you with their own emails as well. Other than those sort of support services, I'm going to say make sure you talk to your academics, the people who are teaching you. We don't bite. So I'll see some of you in molecules, genes and cells this coming semester. I don't bite. Ask the question, okay? All I can do is try and help you. That's what we're here for, all academics. And here's another bunch of academics which are special. These are your program coordinators. So these guys are the people who kind of oversee. If you've got questions, you can ask them as well um, in terms of the different programs. So you can see we've got Michelle and Jonathan in science, Phil in the advanced program, Stephen in biotech, Dan Biomed, Kate wildlife conservation, James in high computational performance physics, um, Graham in the applied data analytics, UI in mineral geoscience and Bruce and Gavin with space science and astro. So they all look pretty friendly, don't they? I don't think they're, they're not going to bite, okay? So make sure you ask and anyone who's teaching you will always be there to try and help you. What I'm going to do now is actually invite up uh, some current students up here to have a conversation. We're going to do a q and I'm going to invite Megan, Sophie, uh, Ali and Joe to come and take a seat, please. Welcome, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So these guys are current students. So I think what I might start off with, first of all, is um, I'll get each of you to introduce yourself, tell us why you chose your degree and what you hope to do in the future. I guess I'll start. So um, my name's Megan. I am doing the Bachelor of Science Advanced with a double major in genetics and ecology. Um, why I chose my degree? So I, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I finished school. I actually started in a Bachelor of Arts in teaching and then I got to the end of my first year and realised I really actually missed studying science. I loved biology in year 12. And I sort of took a moment to think and was like, Growing up, I loved being outdoors, and so looking back now, it was an obvious switch. So I changed to science. Um, I'm in my final semester now. Um, in terms of what I want to do when I finish, I'm not 100% sure still. I am considering doing a master's or honours, but I think I will see how I go at the end of the year. I'm looking to do some volunteer field placements, um, so looking more into the ecology side rather than the genetics. But yeah, I think I'm still figuring out what I want to do, but definitely something in ecology at this point. Um, I'm Sophie. <laughs> I'm doing a Bachelor of Biomedical Science. I'm in my third year this year, um, and I'm going to major in microbiology and biochemistry. Um, so in first year, I actually started doing engineering. So I was doing chemical engineering. Um, I got to the second semester of that and decided it wasn't really for me. Um, I enjoyed the maths, but I did biology in second semester and I found I just love biology. So I transferred and started this degree last year and I've just really loved it. Um, yeah, so in the future, after I finish third year, I'm looking at doing maybe honours um, and maybe going into research or something like that. Hi everyone, my name's Ali. Um, so I've just started my honours degree in biochem. Um, and before that I did a Bachelor of Science Advanced with majors in biochemistry and genetics. 
so when I was at high school, I really enjoyed biology and chemistry, but I didn't really know where that could lead. Um, and one of my year 12 teachers, she had uh, done a PhD in biochemistry and she pretty much uh, introduced me to the world of like research and what working in research was like and I kind of thought that sounded okay. And so she really encouraged me to um, just do a science degree at University of Adelaide because that's where she went and she said it was really fantastic. And so that's why I continued doing science and I also had no idea what direction I wanted to go in, hence why I chose just a general kind of science because in first year I could try heaps of different subjects and then narrow it down in second and third because I really had no idea idea what direction I wanted to go in. So yeah. Hi, um, I'm Joe and I'm doing a PhD currently and um, in biochemistry and originally when I finished year 12 I'd, I sort of knew I liked bio and I liked chem but I didn't really know, sort of very similar to Ali, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I just did a very general degree in the Bachelor of Science. And I sort of did, again, I, I really second the idea of doing as many electives as you can, because I think it gives you a taste for a lot of different things, and then you can sort of narrow down what you want to do. So, and then th after that, I sort of did my honours degree in biochemistry and then continued that into my PhD. So. Great, thank you guys. Um, my next question, I'm actually gonna start off with Ali. What uh, or how did you feel like when you first started first year, because you started in, in sciences, um, how did you feel and what helped you to settle in? Uh, I was very nervous and very scared. So I grew up in the Barossa, which is no, uh, quite a, well, about an hour away from the city and I hadn't um, ever lived in the city or done much in the city at all. So there was that additional um, just whole new a city kind of travel and getting to know a place that I had no idea at all uh, when I started uni. So I think one of the best things I did was did a complete practice day where I left at like the time I would aim to leave um, my house to travel to the city. And then with my friend, we literally just went around to every single one of our classes and worked out how to get there and what the building looked like. And that was probably one of the best things I did because it proved to myself that I know where my stuff is, I can get there and I'm not going to get lost and on my first day when you don't want to be late to your first lecture, that was fantastic. Um, and I think another thing that really helped me to settle in was when you have your lectures, especially in your first semester when people have, I don't know anyone, I just kind of forced myself to sit next to someone, this year it might be sit one seat away from each other, but um, when you sit down like a great conversation starter is like, are you also here for the biology uh, lecture? And then if, obviously you probably should both be. And it's a great way to meet other people. And generally everyone sits in the same spot in a lecture theatre. So you can kind of work out where some people are that are really good to chat to. And it's a fantastic way to meet new people. And I think that's how I pretty much found all my friends was just randomly sitting next to them in a the lecture theatre, having a quick little chat before lectures. And it's one of the best things I did. Thanks, Ali. Did anyone else on the panel want to add anything about something that helped them to settle in in first year? I think I did pretty much the same thing as Ali, like just walking in and sitting down next to or near somebody and just starting conversation. It really doesn't matter what it's about. Um, if you don't do it in first day, then do it the second day. But the sooner you do it, the better. Everybody's as scared as each other, I think, is the thing to try and remember. OK, so takeaway tip. Talk to whoever's next to you and get to know them by the sounds of things. All right, great. All right, I'm going to ask all four of you, what unique or exciting opportunities have you taken advantage of? And we might start up this end with Joe and go that direction this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so throughout my undergraduate degree, I did a lot of, I did a number of lab placements. So you get to go into a real lab and get hands-on experience doing real research. And I think as a young aspiring scientist, nothing is, I mean, I found it to be the most exciting and enjoyable part of my degree because you get, you get, you really feel like, oh, I'm doing real science. And I, yeah, I, ca I really can't recommend highly enough that if you get the opportunity to go into a real lab that you do take that opportunity. Thanks, Joe. 
Um, so in my second semester, second year, I did a study tour to South Korea, so the biotechnology study tour, which was kind of briefly talked about before. Um, so I didn't really want to go away for a full semester, hence why I chose a study tour, and the study tour could also count as a subject. Um, and it was, yeah, seriously one of like the best thing I've done because not only did I meet so many more amazing people um, who went on the trip with me, and it was such a great experience to just travel overseas with a whole bunch of random people who I'd never met before, um, but also just being able to immerse yourself in a completely different culture, like I'd never been to Korea before, was amazing. And we also got to go to so many different um, uh, research institutes in Korea, and then also different universities, and then we also went to some clinical trial places. And like when you just go to Korea, like there were some places that we were the first ever people allowed in to tour that place before because they um, barely ever let anyone in because their research, they value their research so highly. So I would strongly recommend, um, like there's so many different study tours, not just in biotechnology, um, but in science. And it is a fantastic opportunity to meet other people and um, like do a subject overseas. And it's only two weeks and generally it's in the holidays as well. So it doesn't take away from your other study. So yeah. Thanks, Ellen. Um, so these past six weeks over the summer break, I've been doing a summer research scholarship um, in a lab, uh, like a vaccine research lab in the uni. So just over there in the MLS building. Uh, so every day I've got to watch the researchers in this lab do their work and see the different techniques that they use. Um, as well as like read about the area of research and it's been such a great opportunity, like Joe said, to watch people do real science and see um, what there is on offer after you finish your degree and all the different opportunities that are available, which is really, really great. Yeah, I'd say the same thing as Sophie. So I did a summer scholarship at the end of my second year um, and I was doing it, the project that I ended up doing was not the most interesting, but I ended up with a really, really good lab group. Um, and it meant that I got to do not just my project, but look in and help with other people's projects. So it was people doing PhDs, some people doing work on the Coorong, and that since has meant that I've been offered like just short trips doing field work, which is what I want to be doing, I think, as I said before, doing that ecology side of things. So yeah, talking to your lecturers and getting in on those things would be the best experiences that I've had. Great, all right. Last question for these guys before we let you go, which is, um, have you got one piece of advice that you wish you knew when you started? So one piece of advice for these guys. Who wants to go first? I, can go. Um, I think my biggest one is to ask questions. When I first started, I was so scared and I don't think I asked any questions from any tutors or any lecturers. Um, but as I got towards the end of first year, I realized that like, these people are paid for me to ask some questions. And they actually want to help you. Not only do they want to help you with your work, but they also want to get to know you as a person and just be your friend as well, which I think is something that's a bit different from high school. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, take advantage of the drop-in sessions um, that biology, chemistry, physics all do because um, they're fantastic. And also in prax, a lot of the time, there's lots of downtimes when you're waiting for incubations or that kind of thing. And it's a perfect time to just ask your prac demonstrator, hey, I really didn't understand this lecture. How do I do it? And they honestly really want to help you. And the same goes with lecturers. Sometimes they can look really scary standing up the front and telling you all this scary. complex stuff that you have no idea what they're talking about. But generally, they really actually want to help you. And all it takes, if you're too scared to talk to them in person, just send them an email, let them know what lecture you're talking about, because often they're talking, they take lots of different courses at once, just say I'm from the biology one, um, and I just didn't understand this from your lecture, and they would love to help you, so that would be my top tip. Thanks, Alison. Yeah, we're not scary. <laughs> no, it's Turn it on. That's on. Um, <laughs> Uh, what was I going to say? One piece of advice. Um, so yeah, I in I was I guess quite shy in my first year. I didn't really want to join clubs because it involved talking to people I didn't know. Um, but I do looking back, I wish I'd like if I could talk to myself back then, I would have said no, definitely join clubs because I think it definitely allows you to expand your network and make more friends outside of the people you knew in high school. Because I think in the first year, it's quite easy because the, the degrees are quite large that you'll probably know someone from high school. 
Uh, but in the late years, when everyone's starting to specialize a bit more, it, it would I would have really benefited, I think, from having had a larger network at university, especially like for support and all that. Because um, sort of, I sort of had to go through in second and third year a bit more of that awkward thing you should probably get done in first year of like, hey, I don't really know anyone. Like, can we like have a chat or how are you finding the coursework and stuff? So I think, yeah, getting out there a bit and joining clubs and in, invo be involving yourself in club events would be a quite a good, yeah, it's the piece of advice I would have given myself. Thanks, Joe. I think mine would be try and take every opportunity that comes to you. Like, if you don't know how to do something, there'll be somebody to teach you. So if you have an opportunity that comes your way, try and say yes to them as much as you can. Um, because you're going to learn so much more that way if it's something that you potentially are a bit out of your comfort zone in. Um, but yeah, just say yes. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Yeah, similar to Megan, I'd say the best advice would be to just really enjoy your experience at uni. Um, it's going to go really, really fast. I feel like I was just a first year only a little while ago. Um, so yeah, so just try and meet as many new people as you can. Um, make the most of all the different opportunities there are and don't you know, work hard, but don't stress too much about your work. Try and enjoy what you're studying and make the most of it. Thanks, Sophie. All right, join me in thanking these guys. Um, thank you very much for your advice. Much appreciated. Some really good advice there, guys. Um, and I think the I'm just going to always come back to make sure you ask. OK, really important. All right, um, next up, I'd like to introduce Katie, who's uh, from Student Life, and she's going to talk to us. So, she can use another pad away. This is the forward button. Thank you. Thank you. So, how um, uh, do you need a mic? Thank you. I'll put us <laughs> yeah. So, hi, thank you very much for having me here. Does everyone want to have a quick stretch? I just hop up and reach up as yeah you've been sitting for a little while and I know a bit time down here so I'm going to kind of whiz through a little bit of what I've got to share with you today but just want to sort of start just appreciating I'm so enjoying hearing what everyone's been sharing and that sense of you know that community and get involved and I think you know everyone's been through that 2020 experience I'm seeing that sense I think people really appreciating um, that connection you know more and more so um, yeah so welcome. So can I just use this? Sure. Is that all right? Yep. Thank you. So great. So right. So I'm going to be just sharing a bit of information under the umbrella sort of, of student life and the student support services. So my name is Katie and I'm one of the student counsellors and I've been working here for over 12 years now and absolutely love working um, with the student um, cohort. But I'd love to share a bit of information with you around some disability services, elite athlete support, um, international student support, and I'll just quickly also mention the Roseworthy support um, as well. So, um, counselling support, so we're located, counselling separate to the other services, we're in Horace Lamb, which is just across um, next to the Bar Smith beautiful entrance that way and the other services are all in the Hughes building so but the maps are all there you can um, find those as needed um, so um, all counsellors are professionals and have extensive experience working with tertiary students it's a free and confidential service whatever you might come and speak about with a counsellor and um, will be treated with professional confidence so even the fact that you've attended the counselling service is treated confidentially um, and is not recorded on any sort of academic records so if you're experiencing any concerns that are getting in the way of your study please do not hesitate to contact the service to make a time to come and talk. We are here to help. We like to remind people that no issue is too big or too small. Everyone experiences um, sort of challenges and problems throughout their lives and sometimes it can just be helpful to come and have that conversation with somebody. Um, so we're happy to support with any issue that might be impacting on your study but it absolutely doesn't have to be study related as well. It can be, be anything that's impacting your life in general. Um, we handle your concerns and what you speak about um, with sensitivity and help you just develop those skills and strategies that might be helpful to you. 
So to make an appointment, you just if you just type in sort of um, you know counselling into the uni website, you'll find the bit that says access um, counselling, um, and through there there's an online registration form. But if you've got any questions or concerns or things you're not sure about anything, we've got terrific admin staff as well. Don't hesitate just to to phone or pop past as well um, and ask anything as well. So we meet um, the counsellors meet with students one on one, um, and um, you do sort of sessions that way. But we also, throughout the year, will sort of run some workshops and there's webinars and, and things on topics such as stress busting, etc., um, and mindfulness, yoga, um, meditation, etc., as well. So keep an eye out for sort of flyers, information on you know the boards around um, uni and on the website. So the wellbeing hub, I don't know if people came across some of this um, yesterday when they were doing the orientation. We've got a really good sort of online resource now. And in um, the, uh, the wellbeing hub, it's got information on study tips, um, managing sort of health and wellbeing sort of from an emotional sort of physical um, um, you know, points of view. So great, great tips and things to encourage you to go and have a look at that. And now I'm gonna share some information about the disability service. Um, okay, so the disability service is, um, it's about ensuring fairness um, and equity, helping all students um, to have sort of a play, a, a level playing field academically. The service provides professional support to assist students in managing a broad range of medical conditions or disabilities, and these can include things like um, learning difficulties such as dyslexia, um, mental health issues such as depression and anxiety, maybe sort of brain injury that might be a result of an accident, access issues if you find you've broken leg, you're on crutches or you might need a wheelchair, um, hearing and vision impairments, and medical conditions that include things like chronic fatigue syndrome and you know Crohn's as well. All of these things can really make you know your experience a bit more challenging, and there is support to um, to help um, navigate that. So it's important to understand that some of those um, disabilities we've mentioned are kind of hidden as well um, and those types of things, none of those things are any less important. Um, so disabilities and medical conditions are sometimes temporary and sometimes these might be ongoing. These um, disability advisors um, work with students um, who have a verified disability or medical condition and they help in a whole range of different ways that it might be you know, accessing you know, studies sort of with some reasonable accommodations put in place. So they might assist with um, sort of um, exam or study materials that might be needed, uh, physical access issues, loan equipment, um, accessing um, adaptive technology. So you might not think that the service is relevant to you now, or it might be, but it's one of those things that's just really important that you know that it's there and you know, if you ever do, you know where to go. So just a quick few things to remember. Um, if your uni studies require you to be off campus for anything and your disability or medical condition may impact on anything off campus, be sure to plan well in advance for those supports. A collaborative approach is taken working with the student, the disability support worker and the faculty. So if the disability support service is aware of what your needs are, they'll be there to help um, navigate that and work with you. So this service, again, it's a free and confidential service um, and uh, discussions around um, the impact. Oh, this is re really important. So any medical issues, um, information that you share, stay within the service. It's only the impact of that that's sort of navigated and communicated um, yeah, to assist your, your needs. So works well. So if you're struggling, um, yeah, please don't um, hesitate to ask for help. Everyone wants you to succeed um, and plan ahead and utilise the information on the website for further information. So that's all those things. Elite Athlete Services, so hoping that there'll be more things available for people to participate in. Um, but again, it's another free and confidential service that can provide a range of services to the elite athlete um, to help them reach their potential both on the field and off the field. So support, uh, support may include sort of um, help with sort of rearranging exams um, if you may have a sort of a significant sporting event that might clash. Um, so if you think this is eligible service for you, please yeah, do contact um, this service as well. Um, very quickly. 
international student support. We know we haven't got a lot of new people, but we do have lots of students, you know, who still um, um, yeah, are international. We want you to be aware of um, linking in with um, the international student support. Um, they're a very welcoming, friendly and engaging team and they offer support uh, around a whole range of different things for international students. That might be queries sort of regarding uni university life in general, um, general sort of questions, personal support and they also put on some really lovely social events throughout the year as well, so keep them in mind. And um, I haven't got a slide up here, but just with the Roseworthy, any of those of you who will be, um, you know, sort of on site there, they've got a terrific support team of, of people under the Student Life umbrella as well. And they offer, um, this is the, oh, I don't have to, I thought I had the photo. Anyway, I don't, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so they offer counselling support, um, disability service support um, and everything, and accommodation support there as well. So. Um, if you have any, any needs there, don't hesitate to contact them. So I think that's all I have. Yes, it's the end. Thank you very Great. much. Thanks, Katie. My apologies if I've got <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, we're nearing uh, the end. You remember we mentioned the Sciences Service Hub earlier. What are the sorts of questions that you might have for that lovely group of people that we showed you a photo of earlier. You might have questions about your study plan, you might have questions about, in fact, whether you want to swap degrees um, or courses. Do you want to check that you're enrolled in the right thing? So if you want enrolment advice, um, also if you're thinking about things like uh, internships and study abroad, they can help with some of the initial questions around that. So make sure you chat to the Sciences Service Hub team, I'll show them up again. They're in the Darling building, but they've also got uh, email. And if you can't come into campus, they can also chat via Zoom. They'll make appointments with you for that too. So make sure, I'll just reinforce, ask questions. If that's the one message that we have for you today, is make, don't be afraid to ask. Dive right in to different things. Here's these guys in action over in the Sciences Service Hub earlier this week. Um, we also, because we are also live streaming, for those people who are offshore and remote, we have another session this afternoon which is very, very tailored towards some very specific how do I study remotely type questions. And then we also have one for our mature age students uh, via Zoom on Friday as well. So anyone who's sort of returning to study after a very long period of time, It'll be another set of advice and tips and hints as well. So my uni, that my uni site we talked about earlier has got the links. Okay, we've probably only got about two or three minutes for any questions and I believe Mitch is going to be my microphone runner. <laughs> so are there any questions from the audience? Here's your opportunity to check out if, you can, if you're game to ask a question. No question is a stupid question. Anybody got any questions? Oh, good. We're off to a good start, aren't we? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. We'll <laughs> just we <laughs> All right. This is what I've got to look forward to in my first lecture. Hmm. Don't be afraid to engage. Oh, wait a minute, we have a question up there, Mitch. Thank you, and another one. It always takes the first one, doesn't it? Um, oh, God. Um, so, I don't know if you were mentioning, talking about like um, accommodation support, I was just wondering what type of accommodation support there is? Uh, so the accommodation support, uh, basically they'll, they'll actually provide information or links to, uh, you know, finding, finding places to stay. My understanding, and Katie might be able to help me here, is that uh, there is also access to certain grants and things as well. 
my advice sort of regarding accommodation, so um, Roseworthy has got, if it's a Roseworthy sort of um, thing, they have an, a, a dedicated worker there, so you can direct your questions sort of there. The accommodation services, um, you know, is like in the main sort of hub area, they're there. What I would suggest, there are, as, as you've mentioned, there's a whole lot of different things that people can um, potentially be eligible for that might sort of be helpful to kind of get a bit of assistance um, with that as well. So I would just suggest, because it's quite varied, I suppose, as what people's needs might be. So they, um, accommodation services, assist with, um, you know, some of those big buildings and things and um, liaise with the people getting um, people sort of settled in those sort of places, but they also have access to other information um, around housing as well. So it's, it's quite a specific thing and whether or not you might be eligible for certain things. I'd start there and, um, and they'll be able to give you that information. Yeah, okay. so. Thanks, Katie. Awesome. Thank you. Time for one more question. So when you have uh, multiple classes that uh, Sorry, where am I? are adjacent to each other in a timetable, um, for example, finishing and starting at the same time. Is there some kind of leeway there that is uh, like formalised? Yep. So we have like a, a 10 minute crossover, if you like. So um, most lectures, for example, or workshops, etc., start at 10 past the hour and then they end on the hour. So you've sort of got that 10 minutes to get to your next class. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> all right, um, just in the, in the interest of time, because we've got all of our program coordinators, you remember that lovely picture of all those nice people who were smiling and ready to meet you that I showed you earlier? Um, they're all uh, floating around up the back there. What we're going to do next is actually separate you out into a group. What you're going to do is you're going to go and meet with your different uh, program coordinators. So. What I need for you to do is to take note of your colour and location and look for someone who's holding up that colour. And we'll, we'll direct you towards that person. And what you're going to do is you're going to go off uh, with that person. Um, I don't want you to move until I finish, okay? Because we've got one more message after this, okay? So just take note of your colour at this point in time. So. If you're in the Bachelor of Science or the Bachelor of Science double degrees, stay here. You don't have to go anywhere, okay? If you're in the advanced, you'll um, be looking for the pale blue. Where's the pale blue? No, no blue. It's just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we've got Emma's hair. All right. Um, and you guys are going to exit via the front corner of the room, so this down here, okay? So when we're ready to go, you're going to head in this direction. If you're in the biomed, biotech, marine biology or wildlife conservation, that's yellow. This lady right up the... Uh, yeah, and yellow. Sorry, there's two people here. We're, we're <laughs> we've got Jenny up the back and... <laughs> Stephen over here with yellow, um, you'll need to head out the back, okay? And you're going to be heading off to the School of Biological Sciences who look after those degrees. Astrophysics or Space Science and Astrophysics and High Performance is green. So up the back, the two gentlemen, we've got Bruce and Gavin, or three, sorry, and James sitting up the back. They're going to lead you to the School of Physical Sciences to find out more about your degrees. Then we've got mineral geoscience and applied data analytics in red. We've got Graham and Uri up the back there. You're going to head off with them to the Mawson building. And then uh, if we've got any postgraduate students who are in the masters, we've got the purple. Where's Tony? I can't see him. He's up here somewhere. Okay, he must be out the back there. Uh, you'll be going to the Benham Lecture Theatre in purple. So, take note of your degree. Um, and uh, one last thing before you go is that what will happen is you'll get to meet your program coordinator, you'll learn some more specific details about your program, but then what will 
happen after that is they'll guide you to wherever your lunch will be that happens after that. Okay, so that'll be in a number of different places depending upon what degree you're in. I would like to just finalise by saying thank you very much for attending today's session. I hope you got a lot out of it and I'm going to reiterate, make sure you ask questions if you have any because we can't help you if we don't know that you need help. Okay, really important. We're here to help you. We want you guys to succeed. Really important. If there is anyone in the room who happens to be from the Waite or Roseworthy degrees, I'm guessing that's why the hand was up, uh, the Waite and Roseworthy session is coming up next and it's at the Scott Theatre and you can follow me over there because I've got to run that one too. Okay? <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone. Look at your directions and follow your program coordinator. <laughs>